So you have learned that insulin stimulates glucose uptake by the muscle cell, the liver cell, and the fat cell, which is known as the adipocyte. But the question is, how does glucose get into the cells? Do you think glucose can cross the plasma membrane directly? Well, the answer is no, because glucose is a polar molecule due to the presence of many hydroxyl groups. And for that reason, it cannot cross the hydrophilic or the hydrophobic phospholipid bilayer membrane, and it must be imported by specialized transporter protein. And that transporter protein is known as the glucose transporters or the GLUT protein. So a GLUT protein is involved in a process known as facilitated diffusion, which is a type of passive diffusion in which energy is not required because the flow of glucose is in accordance with the concentration gradients of the glucose. So here in this case, you have more glucose outside of the cell than the inside of the cell. And therefore, glucose will just flow in passively without the use of any ATP or energy investment. So with the binding of the glucose into the GLUT1 transporter, for instance, it will change its conformation. And with that, glucose is carried inside the cell. There are many types of glucose transporters. And so far, we have found 14 glucose transporters in the human genome. And each of them is having a different glucose binding affinity, which is represented by the different values in their Km. So most of the cells in your body utilize glucose transporter number one and number three, which has a very low Km at one millimolar. So what does it mean? When a Km is very low, it means these glucose transporters are having a very high glucose affinity. In other words, when you have got a normal blood sugar level of more than 5 minimolar, both of these glucose transporters are being switched on, uptaking glucose into your cells for the basal metabolism to happen. Now, on the other hand, for the glucose transporter number 2, which is found in your liver cell and the pancreatic beta cell, it has a very high Km value of 15 to 20 millimolar. In other words, it is only being switched on or induced by a high glucose level. But why is it so? Well, that's because in your beta cell, when it has encountered glucose, it will actually start producing insulin. And for that reason, we only want it to produce insulin when the blood sugar level is really high, for example, after a meal. Okay, here is an illustration for glucose transporter number two, which is found in your pancreatic beta cells and the liver cell. So due to its high Km value, it will only transport glucose at high glucose level. So with the pumping of glucose into the beta cells, the glucose will undergo glycolysis to produce the ATP molecule. And as the ATP level increases within the beta cells, it will stimulate a cascade of reactions, which ultimately leads to the secretion of insulin hormone so that it can suppress your blood sugar level. If this insulin binds the receptor on your fat tissue or the edible cells and the muscle cells, it will trigger a cascade of reactions so that you'll get the release of glucose transporter number four from your endosomes. So normally you don't have a lot of glucose transporter number four on your cell membrane, on the muscle and the adipose cells because you only have just enough quantity for the cells to survive. But with the insulin, it triggers the relocation of these transporter proteins into the plasma membrane. And as this happens, you can very quickly take in a giant amount of glucose from the bloodstream, hence lowering the blood sugar level into the normal range. And when the glucose level is back to normal, insulin is no more. With that, this glucose transporter number four will be recycling back to the endosome again for the next use. Okay, here you have the Km value for the glucose transporter number four, which is five minimolar. And that is equivalent to the normal range of blood sugar level during fasting. So what does it mean? It means that five minimolar, half of the GLUT4 transporter are bound with glucose molecules, and they will take in the glucose into the muscle and your fat cells 
for glycogenesis. And latest research suggests that we can increase the quantity of glucose transporter for by having endurance exercise such as running and swimming, cycling and so on. So if you are an athlete, your training is not just for building more muscles, but also for the biochemical setup in your body. Likewise, studies also show that exercise can prevent diabetes. That's because it increases the quantity of glucose for transporters. And therefore, your body can respond to the insulin better by importing those glucose in excess into the both your muscle and fat cells.